Hey guys, this is Mandy Chopra here and I'm with none other than Tarek, the creative lawyer. Tarek, welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, really excited today at the April 2023 Titans event. We've got the theme of doing creative deals and we've got three amazing speakers, obviously, including Tarek, talking about different types of creative deals where you might need little or no money up front. So Tarek, I know you're talking about lots of different live deals and structuring and all that, but the one I wanted to speak to you about today was Vendor Finance. Could you maybe little, explain a little bit about how that structure works at a very high level? Yeah, so uh, you agree a price with a vendor for the whole property and then either all or part of it, you actually defer and pay it later. And so you don't pay it on completion. You still complete the transaction, you acquire the property, uh, but you actually pay the vendor at a much later date. Most, most usually it's, it's at the end of the project. So once the property is actually developed and sold, that's when you pay off the, uh, the vendor. So you exchange contracts, but you then have some sort of a deed of trust or something like that? Or? You can do it through a deed of trust, but more likely you'll do it as a loan agreement. Okay. So the vendor will enter into a loan agreement with you for all or part of the purchase price. And uh, on completion, you pay a nominal sum as for, as for consideration. Uh, and then the rest of it essentially gets parked into a loan agreement, sometimes backed by a second legal charge uh, behind the first charge lender. And then you pay them when you, you once you've paid off the first charge lender, you can pay off the vendor. Ah, the first charge lender could be monies for the development loan. Correct. So it could be bridge finance, maybe development finance. So is it specifically good for certain types of deals? Or have you seen, like in your experience, you've been doing a few of these deals. What the sort of typical deals that people are doing using vendor finance for? Uh, mainly for development, but uh, it could be quite a lot of uh, things. But so, for example, the example, the, the, the one that I'm going to be sp speaking about today, uh, there's two development deals. Uh, one is a conversion, one is a ground up development, uh, and another one is a hotel. Uh, so, so is there any specific characteristics of a deal that makes it sort of suitable for vendor finance? Is it because you have direct access to the vendor firstly? Yeah. So you ideally, although you can get off uh, on-market deals, so one of the case studies I'm going to be speaking about is actually an on-market deal, came through Savills, uh, and the deal was struck directly with the um, vendor. Through so, the agent? Uh, it can go through the agent, but I always recommend speaking directly to the to the vendor. And then that way, you know, there's, the, there's no lost in transition problem. But it obviously only works if the vendor doesn't need the money straight away. Correct. Yeah, correct. And so the situation usually is where they're asking for some a price that's a little bit higher than the market value. Uh. And so it doesn't stack at current market value, at today's market value but it might stack in two or three years time once you've finished the development. Project, whether you built houses, converted into multiple units, correct. flats or whatever. Yeah, correct. Oh, very interesting. Yeah. So what else are you going to be talking about today? Uh, options, uh, my favorite, you know, I always, you know, I do about two or three option agreements a day, uh, a week rather. Oh, seriously? Uh, oh, a day, yeah, it's, it's a bit too much, but a week is certainly, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I still think that is the most powerful strategy when it comes to developers and even if, if you're doing an HMO, here's a little tip. I think if you're doing a HMO and you're going for planning, yeah, you always should sign up an option agreement for the land, for the property. Because if you're applying for planning before you exchange contract, which most developers will do because they don't want to waste time. The downside is if it takes a long time to exchange and uh, the planning has already come through, then you've enhanced the value of the H of the property for the vendor, and the vendor then decides not to sell it to you. Yeah. HMO or are you talking about land as well? For Yeah, for land, but also for HMO. HMO. Land is the one that's most common yes. where you use the option agreement. But, but HMO. I, I also recommend it for a HMO. So like a larger HMO, deal. like a eight bed or... Even what, the ones where you're going for planning. Planning, yeah. If it's PD. Over six, over yeah. six, yeah. Correct. Then okay. it's worth doing. Fantastic. Well, listen, guys, unfortunately, you missed this talk. Tarek, we're so excited about your talk today. I know it's going to be amazing. And... Uh, Love to see you the next one, 11th of May, it's our 7th birthday. Please book your tickets now, teamtitans.co.uk. Tariq, thank you so much for today.